بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ تعالیٰ وبرکاتہ آئی ایم محمد احمد قادری ود اے یونیک پروگرام اسلام ان دا کنٹمپرری ورلڈ دا پروگرام ایمز ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ ویریس آسپیکٹس آف اسلامک تھاٹ اسلامک بیہیویئر اسلامک کلچر بٹ اٹس ناٹ اونلی اسلامک وی ووڈ سی ہاؤ دا ویسٹرن ورلڈ ورکس فار دس Naturally, we are human beings, we live in the contemporary world and we need some understanding with the non-Muslim world and the non-Muslim world need to have some understanding with Muslim world. For this, this program would be a bridge among nations. In this regard, today's topic of discussion is very important and interesting as well. This is a unique topic, would be discussed by the scholars those who are familiar with theory as well as practice. The title of the discussion is Work Culture. Viewers, you must be surprising having this topic today. Why? Naturally, it is for the larger interest of understanding and larger interest of our viewers. How Islam says about the working behavior. For this purpose, we have invited our two guest speakers. The first one is a well-known personality, Professor Dr. Abu Zar Vajdi. He is a well-known personality regarding administrative sciences and management. Currently, he is working as a dean faculty of management sciences and administrative sciences at the University of Karachi, Pakistan. Professor Dr. Abu Zarwajdi, we welcome you in our program. Our second guest is again from the University of Karachi, but he is from a different discipline. Professor Kalim Raza Khan, he is a professor of English and currently he is working as registrar, University of Karachi, Pakistan. Professor Kalim Raza Khan, we welcome you in our program. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, uh, Dr. Vajdi, let's see what is concept of uh, work culture and uh, naturally being a professor of uh, political science and head of administrative sciences and management sciences. You would be the person who could clarify before us what is meant by work culture. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم فرسٹ آف آل آئی مسٹ تھینک ٹو کیو ٹی وی اینڈ پروفیسر ڈاکٹر قادری فار انوائٹنگ می ان دس ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک وچ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک آن تھینک یو ویری مچ تھینک یو ویری مچ فار یور ایپریسیشن ورک کلچر اینڈ اٹ ہیز اے گریٹ سگنیفیکنس دس از ناٹ اونلی فرام دی ویسٹرن کانسیپٹ بٹ دس از مور امپورٹنٹ فرام دی اسلامک کانسیپٹ ایگزیکٹلی ایگزیکٹلی But uh, I am beginning with this thing that sometimes the uh, terminology seems to be very simple and is not very easy. Mm -hmm. But when we define it academically, when we give the concept and we give the meaning in a true sense, so this is not easy. This becomes very harder and the entire concept is changed. You mean uh, well, once when you discuss any terminology in the light of uh, academic definition, mm -hmm. so it becomes a bit hard, comprehensive yeah. and logical as well. And very concise, rational. Exactly. exactly. Otherwise, everyone can give uh, the meaning of, the, of this word, mm -hmm. even a person who is not known, who is, who, uh, uh, who is not the students of the management, they can also say that what is work. Mm -hmm. And as the work is very commonly used. Mm -hmm. And work, we mean that getting work done. Yeah. And the concept of work is everywhere. Mm -hmm. In every house, mm -hmm. in your domestic life, in your personal life, in your social life. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I understand that we are going to focus now, the work not only in one perspective of the personal life, or domestic life, or informal organization. Mm -hmm. You say, when we talk about work, so this is very important to say that where the concept of work exists, mm -hmm. 
so the work exists with the organization exactly and organizations as you are also political scientist and we all know that organization is in the informal as well as the formal organizations mm -hmm. concept of work this varies from the informal and formal mm -hmm. what what we have concept of the work in the informal mm -hmm. this is not the same in the formal when we take a formal organization or the organizations where the concept of the workplace is concerned mm -hmm. this is entirely different mm -hmm. suppose in the domestic life in the informal organization even in a family mm -hmm. the housewife she also works mm -hmm. each 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 member of the family they are also involved in doing work and they are free to do mm -hmm. as per their desire mm -hmm. as per their behest there is no restriction that what they work mm -hmm. means a, a a person a member of a, a, as being a member of the family yeah. you can work a lot numerous work there is no any defined work at a time you can you you lock your house at a time you decorate your house you you you, you all the time involved in working in, in such kind of the work yeah the, yeah that is this is this may be uh, taken as a formal and informal definition of uh, yeah. work culture work so culture. coming back uh, uh, to you hmm. i would uh, uh, request uh, professor kalim raza khan you are you, you're working as a registrar of the university how do you take this terminology work culture since this term has two words mm -hmm. and in order to define them in order to explain them these two words first word is culture and uh, if we look at it from the islamic point of view i don't see any difference between the two terms because in islam we submit ourselves to the will of god exactly culture is a way of doing it mm -hmm. so in a way culture is also a way of life mm -hmm. when we join them together especially in islamic uh, concept work is your duty whatever you do is your work that's your job and that's your duty mm -hmm. and within islam you have to perform your duties according to the islamic principles mm -hmm. and islam brought several new concepts to the world mm -hmm. uh i use the word new new in the sense that islam encompasses every aspect of our life yes. so whatever we do we have to do it according to the uh, concepts of islam Mm -hmm. one of the one of them is honesty different virtues one of them is honesty sincerity uh, devotion so if i'm devoting myself to my work i'm actually performing something which is next to worship because if we are doing anything uh, according to the islamic principles there is also taken as a kind of worship it's yeah. uh, it's ibadah it is and uh, naturally uh, our discussion is uh, in progress but we have to go for a short break please be with us stay with us we are coming back very soon it is a short break welcome back in your program islam in the contemporary world and world relates to the work behavior work culture professor kaleem raza khan was discussing about work culture please go on uh, well as we were saying dr saab said that uh, work is everywhere wherever we are we have to do something and there is our work mm -hmm. but uh, i'm looking at it from the point of view of islam what does islam ask ask us to do mm -hmm. so if we are at home our uh, nature of work is different when we are in an office our nature of work is different when the office is a part of a whole uh, network mm -hmm. then our behavior has to be different but our behavior should not be against the norms and standards of a society if the society is islamic we have to behave according to the norms of that society how about uh, once if a muslim is working with non muslim i think that you can remain uh, a muslim uh, by heart and by practice as well restrain yourself from such activities which are against your own norms and your own cultures for example as well islam as well islam for example hugging women mm -hmm. you can avoid that yeah you can avoid drinking mm -hmm. and for example when i was uh, at lancaster at the end of uh, the year they wanted to celebrate the end of the year mm -hmm. and they brought champagne mm -hmm. i didn't become the part of that party i was there i was there i didn't drink anything yeah but uh, i was a part of their culture so i wasn't an oddity there 
Yeah. So you mean uh, that once we are uh, we have interaction with uh, other culture, we should know what they exactly require, because they um, in the Western world as well as uh, North American world they don't like uh, to be closer. Yeah. Once you're talking, there should be a distance. Once if you don't okay. know uh, to whom you're talking, so your style of communication should be different. So it is work culture. And once if you're uh, taken as a part of administration, then your uh, your style of communication, and style of uh, like in, the, in North America and especially in, the, mm. in America, they are uh, they don't uh, they don't go for their dresses mm. like uh, tie and coat and other stuff. Usually they are informal mm. in their office, and uh, there is no uh, uh, sort of barrier or hurdle to have your interaction with your manager or your high ups. But in different cultures, you have. Uh, the, the, these sort of uh, limitations. So you think in Islam, you see any 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 uh, kind of uh, difference between the Western world and the Islamic world? I think modesty is the key. Islam teaches us to be modest. Mm -hmm. Modesty requires that my body has to be covered, not from head to feet, but the parts which are recognized as, uh, let's say, the body itself. Uh, I, I'm decently dressed. So if I'm decently dressed, I can be anywhere. But if I'm attending my office in Bermuda shorts or uh, just a vest, it would be inappropriate. Mm -hmm. So we dress appropriately. Yeah. And if you are dressed appropriately, uh, there is no harm in it and it doesn't go against our religion. Yeah. And th that's something. Yeah, and uh, this, this, this uh, can be a true approach to be a part of culture. And uh, talking about work culture, our uh, professor, Dr. Bhuzawajdi, he's here. And uh, I must say that uh, you're dealing with administrative sciences and management sciences. So how do you correlate academically as well as uh, practically? You see, what the doctor Saab has said about the work culture, I, I, I would like to add some, some more thing. You see, we are now the part of the globalization. Yeah. And we are going towards coming closer creating our interactions and uh, in globalization process uh, there are the workforce diversities because in globalization process as so there is no restrictions uh, on the basis of the religion on the basis of the culture on the basis of your language and this is why the workforce diversity that has become very important factor of any organization. So you're talking of uh, multiculturalism? Multicultural, yes. Okay. You see, no organization, whether Islamic, based on the uh, Islamic principles or on the Western principle, everyone respects. Everyone respects to by whom? laws, by to their whom? policies, to, 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 to uh, respect the values exactly. of the other nations, other peoples, other cultural people, because you see, we are in the world that people are coming from far away mm. to Pakistanis are going to work in the US. US is coming here on the multinational companies when we give the examples of the multinational companies. Only the thing is that we vary from our culture. Culture and you, you see that this is your practice. You mean this uh, is your, your norms. While you say we, what do you mean by we? We means Muslim Umma? We, we means uh, Muslim, Muslim, Muslim Umma, okay. Umma yeah. Okay. So, you see, for example, that if you are working in the US culture mm -hmm. or in Japanese culture, there is no harm if someone, um, men and women, male and female, they embrace each other, they shake their hand. Mm -hmm. But if even the people mm -hmm. coming from the US, mm -hmm. American people, mm. and if they work in the uh, in our organization in Muslim societies, mm. he has to respect the values. Yeah. He cannot freely. Yeah. He cannot shake the hand with the women. Yeah. Women do not shake the hand, even if she is working outside. It depends. Yeah, doctor. <laughs>